Welcome back. This is the sixth episode of PTBO Canada Live with Mike Judson joining me and Neil Morton. A uh, bigger crowd than what we're used to. Can you guys give a little bit of noise? Ah. Are you kidding me? I love it. We'll turn the cameras around and show the crowd later. But uh, no, we've got a, uh, you know, we took a, we took a week off because, uh, of because what? the weatherman, Mike <laughs> Judson, canceled the podcast. Yeah, that's that's what I did. I did not cancel the podcast. It well, was, it's on you on, on social media. They're like, Mike Judson canceled a podcast? Oh, yeah, because I'm, I'm totally not used to being blamed for anything. canceling anything, yeah. right? Uh, the only thing I don't get blamed for is canceling school. But um, aside from that, um, so we took a week off, which was kind of nice. It was at the end of uh, the, the Christmas break. And you know what? It was nice to get that Sunday off. But now we're back at it. It's a new year. 2015, we're going to have at her, and uh, we've got a pretty cool show on the way for today. Um, we've got Missy Knott. She's going to be joining. She's just sitting over there. She's got a guy who's going to be playing with her. And um, Missy, uh, I, I've, I've been, I poured through her bio. I knew I knew that Missy has been quite popular and has toured around right. the country, but um, some of the little things in there that she's done, uh, pretty cool stuff. So she's going to actually be on and, and talking to you today for an interview, not just singing. Missy has quite an interesting backstory of uh, how she came to be who she is today. And um, so that'll be interesting. We also have uh, Kate Wells on today. And Kate's one of the, <laughs> Kate's one of the uh, foremost experts on autism anywhere, quite frankly. And uh, I love that she uses social media and the power of, of Twitter to convey um, how she's doing, how her family's doing, and, and really to give us a real realistic portrayal of, of living with autism and what it's like. So Kate's going to come on and talk to you today, too. And they're both, Missy and Kate are both fabulous speakers. I've heard them before. So That's right. And of course, Missy's going to come on at the end. She's going to razzle-dazzle us with a, with a little bit of music. But, uh, right. And the uh, Koski nugget, of course, too. And the Koski. Well, Koski's here. And I think we're giving Koski a new title now. We he's, are. He's production assistant, right? Pr pr production assistant. And, and intern? And, uh, well, he's not an intern. No. Well, he, technically, he's, he's not he's an not intern being, yet. Well, he's not being paid, so he's technically <laughs> he, an intern. He's applying for our internship program. That's right. He's yeah. applying for our internship program. He's yeah. production assistant and uh, guest services. So if any of the guests here today have any issues, David Koski's right here on the on the couch. If so you just, need more dip for your lattice fries, yes, you he, go see Koski. he's definitely got yeah. a lot of dip. Okay, and yeah, he's oh oh yeah, this isn't official until he gets his own clipboard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, it's not in the budget yet, Koski. But uh, seriously, we're really excited to be here. Episode six, we have. Uh, we have a, a bunch of episodes lined up this year. Uh, there's so many stories to tell in this community of amazing people and musicians, and uh, I think it's going to be great, and I think it's definitely the turnout today is phenomenal, and uh, I think we're building some buzz behind this, and the whole idea of storytelling and long-form narrative. and Story, uh, yeah. Storytelling over beer. Over is, beer, It's yeah. one of the more, more important things that we do here. Yeah. And uh, speaking of storytelling, I um, th this is kind of interesting. Earlier this week on Thursday, I, I went... Um, for the first time in 12 years uh, to the dentist. Wow. You know, I've had, like, coverage to go and do this, and I refused. My wife went to the dentist and then booked my appointment and then told me about it, like, two days before, and she said, like, if, if you cancel now, it's going to cost us a bunch of money. You yeah. have to go. So you couldn't do it again. So cancel I went, like you've done 12 years straight. And you know what? And not, not to be a dick, I won cavity. One cavity for and, 12 and, years? And guess, that was my first cavity. Wow. Yeah. So that shows that you should not be going regularly. That's right. What's you the point? Going, yes. Because I left, and now like my teeth are on fire all the time because yeah. they cleaned all that precious yeah, tartar off of it. Yeah, your are looking a little red. They're, fl they're flaring at me today. Oh, they hurt. I like so, my, what, so what was your plaque count? <laughs> uh, the plaque count was actually pretty impressive. Yeah. Uh, it took a while to get those sweaters off, but they're, they're gone, <laughs> yeah. and uh, the teeth are clean, and I guess uh, like there's spaces between them. I didn't know that existed. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have chicken wing bones between it. But why why do you you have benefits? Like why do you go once every like I don't right? like the dentist. It's um yeah. it's uh, But I no one does, Mike, but most of us still go. I, I'm so, lazy. Yeah. I'm just a perpetually lazy. Do you get person. annual physicals? No. No. <laughs> I've never had a physical. You've never had a physical? No. Like Mike, like you. Oh no, I had a physical once, and I did the whole turn your head and cough thing, and that's when I found out that they move when you cough. It's pretty cool, eh? <laughs> I had no idea. It's like idea. a magic trick. <laughs> it is. It, it is like a magic trick. It's like a juggle. Yeah. I had to like show my wife. I'm like, check this out. <laughs> yeah. Said, wow. Because Everything's we talked about it before. You're this outdoorsy alpha male guy. That's what you like to project to the world. But why you, you won't get a physical? <laughs> that's what you like to project to the world. Yeah. Really, you're this like I'm, introverted, sad man that's afraid of dentists and yes, doctors. Yes, well, it's I think I'm like any other guy. You know what? Uh, if there's nothing wrong, I don't go. If I got a problem, I go to the to the ER. It's usually a broken bone or like a big cut or something like that. But if I feel good, I feel good, and I don't need someone poking and prodding telling me that. Oh, well, you could potentially feel bad in about ten years if you don't do this. 
this. So with your windshield that's had a crack in it for 12 years, are you waiting? Because <laughs> we drove around and no, you're like, you know Neil, I'm waiting for the windshield to actually smash into it. I told you the story of my windshield. Yeah, my, I did, yeah. my, my windshield has been broken and cracked for almost two years now because we, my wife and I had, um, had a tiff as we were driving to Perry Sound and I was taking some back roads, and she likes to try and navigate. Yes. When she is the one person. And, you know, there are lots of, of great people who can navigate, and I've got that inner compass. She does not. Every guy has an inner compass, Mike. Well, I don't know about that. But either way, we're driving along, and, and I'm like, I think we should have turned there. She's like, no, it's straight. And then we go straight, and it's not the right turn. And I turn around, and, I turn, and you know what? I had to slide it in there because she yep. found out she was wrong. I was right. I had to slide in. I'm like, well, you know, uh, I guess we should have turned when I said so. <laughs> and she got mad, and jokingly, she was like rats and threw her phone, which is in an otter box, and it bounced like one corner off of the windshield, yep. and then it like, uh, I guess uh, the, the ricochet, the inertia of it, yeah. like it, it <laughs> shot the other end into the windshield, and it cracked it in two places. Yeah. I refuse to replace this windshield myself. Right. I'm not doing it. It's her fault. She threw the phone. Yep. And she was wrong about the directions. So she's, and you know what? It's been two years and it's just, a, it's just, a, you know. So it's still not fixed. It's the elephant in the car. So all the money we're making off this podcast, you still haven't fixed it. it sit up, sit up, go up front yeah. right now. There's a huge crack in my windshield. Right. So you're both very stubborn, you and Jen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're pretty stubborn. Yeah. So uh, how do you resolve uh, your stubbornness between the two of you? I guess we wait until the entire windshield just falls in on yeah. top of us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We go down together in a fiery flame. Well, as you know, and I've told you this, I used to run a couple magazine yeah okay so if you and jen need a private <laughs> therapy session i'm here for you man yeah, that's like not... I, I i'm i'm the go-to guy i have well, a what would you suggest at this point would you suggest that i concede and go and buy uh the windshield and have it installed yes yes why you're gonna get, because you're going to accumulate a thousand brownie points this is like air miles for guys and this thing is going to last you. What, what for am I going to use them for? For the next windshield? Yeah, exactly. It's going to happen because you're going to make a mistake again with your inner <laughs> compass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Well, yeah. my moral compass at least is intact. Yeah, but, well, um, that's, that's okay. But either way, yeah. So yeah. my teeth are clean, and that's a good thing. So, Mike, let's rock and roll. Do you want to start the show? Yeah, I think we should start the show. I'm going to grab the camera here and take a Not look. Not that and we didn't already start but, it. But before we do, we, yeah. uh, we, of course, we always have housekeeping that we have to do here and things like this. We have wonderful sponsors. And uh, the, the, the first sponsor we'll mention so far in the, in the cast is, of course, the wonderful people here at Riley's downtown in, uh, in Peterborough. And the great thing about coming in to check us out on a podcast on a Sunday is that they do half-price wings, half-price nachos, and, uh, and cheap tall boy beers as well. And I think we're drinking Steam Whistle today? Uh, we are today. We're sampling different varieties we're of sampling so, until we find one that we like. Yes, we're very picky. We're very picky <laughs> yes. with our beers. But uh, Riley's is a great place because it's like a multifunctional like complex. You have a pub on one side. It kind of reminds me like when you go down to a resort. Like right. down, uh, all down, inclusive. down south. It's all inclusive. You don't have to ever leave this place. You're like at the resort, you have your like your Asian place, your this yeah. restaurant, this and that. So this, you have your pub, and then yep. you've got your pool hall, and then you've got your nightclub upstairs. Right. And uh, it's also doubles as like a function place. Yeah. So uh, Riley's, uh, thank you very much for having us on the podcast as always. Yeah. And we'd also like to thank Court the TV and Stereo as yep. always. Uh, Scott they've been Stewart. With us since the beginning, Scott Stewart at Court the TV and Stereo. And uh, Mars Music has been great. And uh, Court the Home Hardware Group of Companies is coming on as well. As how, sponsor, how many are so. in that group? Uh, there's six, six doors. So um, they want to get behind it as well. So, um, yeah, no, we really appreciate all the sponsors because they're what make this podcast run. Other than you and I. Other uh, than you. Uh, other than me. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I think that's it. Yeah. So uh, I, uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get Missy not. So if you can go grab Missy, I'm just going to go take a look at the crowd. Okay. Awesome, all right. man. All right. Thank you. I'm really glad, like, no, like I don't have to share headphones with people, because like I, I get pretty sweaty up here. So yeah, I'm just are. a naturally glistening, sweaty guy. Okay. Okay. So we're do, we're doing it a little more organic these days. Yeah, this is one of those. Tests. Okay. Yeah. So we we used to separate with like different ads, but I think we're we're just gonna go with the flow now. Uh, it's it's a it's a lot easier. I think it's a little more organic. So speaking of organic, um, do you shop at Whole Foods or? No. <laughs> no. Okay, joining us now. Um, so this is this is a woman who um, 
has done a lot since really 2009. 2009 was kind of a, p- a pivotal year for you. It was about five years ago. You put out your first album, and um, you went on tour. I think it was a six-week tour that landed you up in northwestern Ontario. Um, uh, speaking of other things that you've done, um, incredible stuff uh, pouring through your bio online and little snippets that I could find about you. Um, one of the coolest things was that you ended up going to this, uh, I think it was a conference of some sort in 2010 to Vancouver, and then you ended up on stage singing and dancing during the opening ceremonies of, of the Vancouver Olympic Games. Can yeah, you tell me absolutely. a little bit about that? It was an extremely weird process. I was 19, and uh, I'm from Curve Lake First Nation, uh, which is just a little bit north of here. And there was an advertisement in the local newsletter that they put out once a month uh, looking for uh, young artists, young entrepreneurs, uh, people who were pursuing their dreams. Um, it was a small application process, and I put my application in, including my new album that I had just released. And they wrote me back and asked me to come. So as far as I knew, I was going to this Indigenous youth gathering with 300 other youth from across the country. And when we got there, that's when they told us what we were doing. And it was 19 days of, you know, I had just turned 19, and it was, it was, it was a dry event. We couldn't drink. Right. <laughs> we couldn't do anything <laughs> like that. Uh, it was... Um, Every day was something fitness, uh, something musical. Uh, I stayed in a cabin off in the woods, uh, somewhere near Squamish. It's been a while, so I can't really remember exactly. But I know I was at, um, my camp was called Evans Lake, and they divided us into um, three different camps. Yeah, so I stayed in a cabin with eight other women that were um, musicians. I had uh, uh, people pursuing their athletic dreams, uh, things like that. And I think the oldest was about 27, so that's... We are ranging from about 18 to 27. All right. Uh, so now being on stage at the uh, at the Olympic opening ceremonies must have been incredibly intense, like seeing all those people, because it was a huge thing, right? Yeah. It, it, like, <laughs> even still sometimes, I'm like, was I actually there? <laughs> like, um, our first, like, big rehearsal where we were actually on the floor in that huge stadium, and we were dancing, and, like, Nelly Furtado and Brian Adams oh, were... I have things in there. <laughs> Nelly Furtado and Brian Adams were um, just like right there in front of me. Really? Because we ha- they were like the main attraction during. Like, did you get to talk to them at all? Or? Not, not like they talked to us. It's not oh, like yeah. it's not like I got to have a conversation with right. either of them. But yeah, like it felt like I had. So being up there and seeing the lights and seeing the people and being part of the music—that's like the sort of thing that must elevate your hunger to want to do this full time and want to be in front of humongous crowds, right? Absolutely. Well, not only that, just being around all of these people that were so, like, inspiring. And, you know, they had so many cool stories. And they were, you know, Ojibwe Crete, like, from from all over. And they knew what it was like to come from a reserve. And they knew, like, it was just, yeah, it was unbelievable. Okay, so I want to know, first of all, where where you got started uh, got started with singing. I think it was when you were in school, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not gonna lie, I just always really loved being the center of attention. Like since I was like, <laughs> really, like really young. Like cheers to that. If you had a, if you had a beer, cheers. To <laughs> yeah, that. absolutely. It, uh, ever since really young, you know, I loved uh, making speeches and performing for my class all of the time. But it really, really started with my f- first boyfriend, Sam Ferguson, who is also a local musician. Yeah. And we met when we were about seventeen, and we fell in love. And he was an incredible guitar player, and he told me, like, well, you have an amazing voice, so let's do this. And his mom was very musical, so it was them that kind of pushed me to make my first album. No, it was them who absolutely pushed me to make my first album. So, and, then you, and then you made the first album, and then you started getting some pretty good response from it, no? Absolutely. Uh, I think a, a lot of it, it helps that, you know, I have my Aboriginal background. I think... Um, that helps. I, th- I think that a lot of the, f- the attention came from that community to okay. begin with. Oh, okay. Right, from, like, from, it, from, from Aboriginal, uh, like, um, APTN gave me a lot of coverage, okay. and, you know, they put my CD up for sale, and they put it in CD Plus, and so I felt like, yeah, I'm already a star, like, what more do I need? That's awesome. Um, but then, you know, there's there's the downside to that, too, because you want to reach out to mainstream, and I, I was friends with a lot of people that weren't from the reserve and things like that so well you wanted to be the selena for the aboriginal community right i loved selena you yeah, love selena was, <laughs> yeah. do you love selena or do you love jennifer lopez that's the question uh, well well i know everything about selena now because of the role she played Fair jennifer enough. lopez but yeah i was a big j-lo fan as well yeah 
Yeah. And so, and and what did that uh, when looking at that dream, wanting to be the Aboriginal Selena, th- that would be a, a like a ton of weight on your shoulders. Uh, did, did did you put that weight on yourself when moving forward and writing? Um, not during my beginning stages. I'm starting to feel a lot more now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was a lot of fun and games, and at that point when I made my first album, I was still in college. I, you know, I did the educational assistant thing, and I was still working towards other things. I thought, you know, like, why not cover as much ground as I can? Uh, but now, like, it's like, oh, I want to do is music, and you realize that, you know, there's, it's a big world. There's lots of opportunity, and there's lots of other things that I'm interested in, and you start feeling the pressure of the community love, and... You know, you go to Millbrook and you see, like, Como Serena Ryder. Like, I start to feel that from Curve Lake a little bit. Like, You, you want to see that, right? Well, and I'm starting, like, people are asking, like, you know, who I am. And my mom's feeling the pressure. Like, she doesn't even know what to say. Oh, she's just living in Peterborough right now, just, you know, keeping it calm. <laughs> like, so it's, you know, there's that pressure always. But I'm happy, so. Now, your last name, not. Um, when I first moved to Peterborough, I saw your name, uh around I, I don't know if they're family members of you but there's a, a, a I think a very famous artist with Norman Knott Norman Knott is that a relation to yours yeah second cousin my mom's first cousin and I see his work all over the place so that's kind of cool absolutely yeah so the, it seems like there's this kind of artistic thing within your family that um, you know maybe they've been kind of helping you in that regard to, to move forward and chase those dreams absolutely it's huge in the community I mean with my immediate family not so much yeah. <laughs> but uh, definitely within the community there are some incredible talents yes all right, so what's what's next for you? What are you going to do? I mean, you've done breakfast television. You've done all, all, all sorts of concerts from Toronto. I mean, Toronto, you, you've been getting a lot of good support down in, in Toronto, which is kind of, it, it seems like what you have to do if you're from Peterborough. You have to start here and then try and move down to the big smoke. Yeah, I think it'd be silly if you didn't. The city's so close and there's so much, uh, there's so much opportunity there. Uh, just one street is 100 different venues, Yeah. right? It doesn't take long to cover all the venues here, so... So um, another thing I, I wanted to touch on, and we, we, we kind of touched on it a little bit, is, um, is being from Curve Lake and being Aboriginal. Um, in, in terms of it um, affecting the way you write, I'm sure it does, but um, in terms of the way that you're trying to propel your career, uh, um, are, are you looking, you said that, you know, it helped with the Aboriginal community. Are you finding it harder to break into the mainstream? Does it hold you back in any way, do you think? think it holds me back in any way no um other than family ties and and you know the the broken backbones that come along with with the native community I mean it's not all rumors you know there's a lot of that going on but uh it's just been a bigger push and luckily for me I've always had like Brian Mellenbacher has been my collaborator for since Sam and I broke up which is like four four or five years ago and he's completely mainstream into the folk arts um, didn't really know anything about the native community, so we've all. It's a pretty um, good balance. Yeah, it's been a pretty good balance, absolutely. That is that. That's very cool. So, um, if you, uh, I mean, you're obviously you, you've just put out this new album or this new uh, video with Kate Leduce from Robot Eyes, who was on our uh, second or third yeah, episode. Yeah, absolutely. And um, this is a very very well polished video. Um, you, you sound great. You look great, and just the the effects and everything surrounding it are quite impressive. What was it like, first of all, to be a part of that? Unbelievable. Yeah. I It actually came about because I knew Kate had wanted to start this uh, film company where she... At- Atomic Film. Yeah, Atomic yeah, yeah. Film Shop is what they're calling it. And uh, she actually just made a post on Facebook saying, any local artists want to make a video? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, hey, like, I haven't seen you in a while. Like, if you want to. So we met for at the Only and we had a beer and we talked about it and she told me her ideas. But I had no idea that that is how what the outcome would be like you know I'm standing on a dock and I'm sitting in the back of a car and I did not expect it to come out like that I was blown away it, it's it's very cool and you the know effects I'm, are unbelievable I, I'm a weatherman I know I know a thing or two about a green screen and uh, yeah. you, you can hardly tell that you're using a green screen it looks it looks and really I had cool. never used a green screen before so like that it was just a really cool learning experience for both of us doesn't it feel weird when you're standing in front of something you have to pretend there's something else behind you and really like get into the moment well especially because Kate is so animated and amazing like she's not scared of anything so she's like you know dance and like wail your arms and I'm just like what (laughs) like really like I don't know how but you know by the end of it we got it going and it, it turned out really well I'm really impressed with her work and so if we can use this video 
to propel you into into the spotlight, which I think it will. It, it should be able to, and uh, hopefully spreading it down south throughout the United States. If you did attain that sort of a certain kind of Selena persona, that Selena celebrityism, what would you do with it? Ooh, that's an interesting question. You know, I just feel like it it has become this sort of like music is my you know I wake up and I'm thinking about it it's like this it's been my boyfriend you know for the past <laughs> uh, no seriously like it's my baby and it's like um because of being from the native community and stuff I really do have I'm capable of like inspiring all these young youth who aren't really you know they don't get these kind of opportunities but I look for them I don't think they know how to look for them right so I haven't, you know, Facebook's an amazing tool, Twitter's an amazing tool, YouTube, all of these things, you can kind of stay connected, and I get messages all the time, and it's so awesome to be able to, like, write them back. Yeah. And so at this point, it's just kind of like, what, what I want to keep doing is just help the reserves thrive on, you know, on dreams, because I feel like a lot of it, I mean, even just not even in Native communities, That's you know, a lot of people thrive. can't really believe in themselves anymore or something, because social media kind of sucks you in, and yeah. you feel like you have to be like everybody else, but, like... I don't know, just like... To thrive on dreams. I think I think you, you, you said that and then almost like skipped over that line. That, that was the one that hit me the best there is, is teaching people how to thrive on dreams because um, the, sometimes you, you can see something, but you, you just can't... You, you're not able to materialize it for yourself, right? Absolutely. You, you can't see yourself doing it. And you're just, you're, you're just going to chase it until you can grab it, beat it down, and then dominate it, right? I hope. Yeah, I, I already feel like with the opportunities and the people I've met and the things I've learned, like I'm already like winning like regardless of where I am or what I'm doing like I'm really like even just being here like thank you for having me right it's like it's really super cool some of the people you get to meet and the things you learn about other people it's everybody's a teacher and not everybody's a musician but no that's (laughs) (laughs) not everybody's everybody's a singer but you know like everybody's got something to show you so yeah so what's coming up in 2015 well, uh, I've been trying to get down to Nashville to work with New Sun Records, who called me and asked me to join their record label. This was in April. Uh. Um, we had a couple, you know, like Brian's dad had passed away, and mm-hmm. uh, he was living in Beijing previous to that. And, uh, you know, it's our project, and it's our music and things like that. So I hope everything falls into place this year and nothing else kind of gets thrown at us. But that's the next thing, and hopefully touring by the summer and... Just keep at her. So basically, I'm getting, like, uh, the last interview before you take off to Nashville. We'll see. Like, we'll see. It's supposed to be February, so... Wow. Get down there and get the the material recorded. Are you nervous? I would be so nervous if a Nashville weather station asked me to come and move down there and start doing weather. (laughs) That would be so scary. I won't be going for that long. I'll be going down (laughs) long enough to get the material finally created and, you know... Have you you been there before? I've never been to Nashville. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What have you heard about it? that I need to play the Bluebird Cafe and, right. <laughs> and you know, all these things. I that. heard there's like these great like little trailer bars you can go to. People set up bars like in their trailers and like it's like uh, apparently that's part that's of the circuit. One. I haven't heard that uh, one. I've so. had a couple buddies who have played through that area and they're like, yeah, I played this trailer bar. It was like, you're in a trailer, you're playing at one end and then there's like 12 people drinking. Don't do it. <laughs> no. Don't do it. Okay, I'll it is not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not even kidding. He was playing at one end and this is a double wide trailer. And there's a bunch of guys drinking at a bar, like 12 guys drinking at a bar uh, in the middle. And then there was a lady dancing on the other side. And he said it was the worst thing he's ever been a part of. Slash the best thing he's ever been a part of in terms of storytelling. Right, right, right. But just don't do it, please. But um, Hopefully uh, I don't get yeah, sucked into that. <laughs> we'll see. I, I still remember the first time I saw you was at a Pete's game. You were sitting in the front row. Or do you still go to the Pete's games? I try to, as yeah. often as I can, yeah. Yeah, and uh, th- I was there with Tyler Calver. And then uh, I, ended oh, yeah. up, I ended up meeting you somewhere in town. Either way, every time I see you, you're just like, you know, you kind of radiate this good positive energy. And um, you, you continue to. It's been four years that I've been living here. I see you every now and then. So I, I'm really glad that you're keeping on the straight and narrow and that you're going to continue with the music. Um, I remember when you did the Hoot Nanny two years ago. And you guys, and that was with Brian. And yeah. I think Brian left shortly after that. Yeah, yeah. that's right. So uh, I'm just I'm I'm glad that you're keeping uh, keeping on. And you know what? Um, this new video is fantastic. We're gonna tag it, and then uh, we're gonna bring you back to to actually sing for us a little bit later in the show. Thank you so much for having me. No, thank you, everyone. Missy, not put it together. She'll play with us later in the show. Great job. Thank you so much. 
BTBO Canada Live with Mike Judson is always brought to you by the good folks down at Kawartha TV and Stereo, right at the corner of Lansdowne and Park Street, right here in Peterborough. Now, a lot of people out there, you know, you want your uh, your TVs, your electronics. They have TVs, they have uh, full stereo equipment, they have gigantic leather massage chairs that kind of strap you in there and massage the hell out of you. But at the same time, they have headphones, they've got cameras, they've got tripods, they've got everything that you need. And the good thing about Kawartha TV Stereo, they're not a big box store, so you know that all of your money when you spend it with them is going to be staying local. All their salespeople, they don't get in your face, but they're always there to help. It's kind of like a family feel, and their prices are always competitive. So be sure to head down to Kawartha TV and Stereo right down at Lansdowne and Park Street. They're the ones who support this podcast. They have been uh, sponsoring this podcast since the start. They gave us a bunch of equipment to make this happen, so that's why we're always going to be plugging them. We love them for what they've done. And uh, at the same time, you can always visit them online at KawarthaTV.com. All right, let's go back to the podcast. All right, well, um, we're back. Hello? I, I think we took a break there. I don't even know. But uh, <laughs> joining me now, um, you uh, you were supposed to be here last week. And I then, was. Yeah, and then um, Missy and uh, her guitarist just could not handle the weather, and they couldn't make it down. I'm trying to pass the blame off. I can't. Well, he had that. a good distance to come from, uh, didn't he? Ancaster, Lancaster, yeah. Manchester. Yeah. Slash pastor? I don't yeah. even know the name. Yeah, of that's the place. a good distance. But either way, you, you, you're here now. I and, am. Um, it, it's like I, it's like I, I, I didn't stop seeing you because you know what? you're uh, you're very prevalent on uh, social media, uh, I am. especially Twitter. Yes. And uh, for anyone who doesn't know, this is uh, Kate Wells, and you are like a champion of autism awareness. And if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't probably know or understand as much about it um, as I did, I mean, oh, three thanks, years Mike. ago. thanks, Mike. That means a lot. Thank you. Well, um, that's, that's nice. It's funny because when I first started at Czech's Television, I think it was in the first year of being there, yeah. <laughs> um, I got a message um, from, from you and Jason. Yeah. Uh, Jason is, um, is your husband, yeah. and you have two wonderful kids, yeah. Emma and Aiden. Yeah. And, um, and you guys said, you know what? Um, Aiden, our son, has autism, and he's got this thing <laughs> where it's... Um, wh- wh- how do you describe it? Uh, he absolutely is Czech's TV's number one Next, well, the news watch really specifically biggest fan. He doesn't like the Czech Daily so much, right? Just uh, well, it's tough because SpongeBob sometimes <laughs> falls. So, um, speaking it, of Gary, are you wearing open toes today? No, I know he loves my feet. It, he calls them Gare Bear, Gary, Gare Bear, meow. You know the SpongeBob. <laughs> so, um, he likes to play with my feet. Okay. Uh, but, uh, no, he's always been a fan. Uh, before you, it was Jay Scotland. Right. And uh, then you came along, and you're funny. And uh, he loved you from the time you started. And, and he met you, uh, I don't know if you'll remember, at Lansdowne Place yes. in Sears. Yes. And Jason was with him. I do and, remember that. Uh, he was so excited. And then you invited him to come for a tour uh, at Checks, And he got to stand um, at the, in front of the green screen, I guess. Yep. And you let him do the weather, yeah. and he was so excited. So thank was, you for that. It, it was it was so cool to see yeah. because uh, it was the it was the second time I'd met Aiden. He was so shy the first time, yeah. And then he came to the station. He was so shy yeah. again until I gave him the clicker and put him in front of the green screen <laughs> so he could see himself. Down. He was so Whoa! excited. <laughs> it was yeah. just blown away. But yeah. uh, and this was kind of my introduction to to you and your family, and um, you and your family really kind of let it all hang out online. We do. And, you know, um, that's not for everybody. Um, no. That's uh, more or less uh, how we handle things. For many years, pre-social media, uh, we were really um, locked away, if you will. Uh, we were um, living in Ottawa. We, didn't, we weren't surrounded by family, by friends. Um, we were living the life. I tell you, it was a very dark time. Um, you know, you're sitting in your home, you know, in four, four walls, and then that's it. You're kind of really isolated from the world. We couldn't take him anywhere, really. Um, now, was that because of just public perception? Um, yes and no. At that time, yes, because he was younger. So the, the perception when you see a child, a young child who is um, having a meltdown that's, you know, 10 times worse than what a temper tantrum would be, uh, people's first instinct when they see a five-year-old or a seven-year-old or four-year-old is to say, uh, not my kid. Oh my God. If that was my son, I would pick him up and he, you know, 
people oh, totally. don't realize. They I'd don't put realize. Them a, put them yeah. in a suitcase and yeah. throw them down My, a hill is yeah. what I would say. And they instantly blame the parents. It's the parents' fault. It's a parenting issue. It's a behavioral, you know. And the thing is, is probably before kids, I would have had the same thoughts. Right. right. I would have been that same person, like, never will my kids ever behave like that in public. But then as he got older and he, you know, and thankfully we moved back home to Peterborough to be closer to my family and, and friends. And, um, you know, it was, it was becoming more and more obvious, you know, Aiden, uh, you know, physically, you know, very distinctive from his typical peers, uh, obviously language wise. Uh, physically? Yeah. How so? Um, he has, um, a lot of delayed motor skills also. Okay. So, um, you know, and he does a lot of the hand flapping and the bouncing right. and he walks on his tippy toes. And so different movements that are very atypical from his 12-year-old peers. Okay. Um, so now, now we, you know, we take him everywhere. And, and, you know, sometimes it's a hit, sometimes it's a miss. Right. Um, I always say um, I was very excited that we, we got that brand new big mall until I took him there one day and he had a meltdown. I had to walk from the food court out to the parking lot in Sears. I was like, oh, oh my God, this wow. is the worst walk ever. I hate this mall. <laughs> no, it's a great mall. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's funny. You, you know, every parent who has a child with any kind of uh, special need, you kind of, you're always aware of every exit, every strategy. It's like a military operation. Anytime you take him anywhere, whether it's a grocery store, whether it's anywhere, you're planning everything out for worst case scenario. What do I do if this, you know? Yeah. And you don't realize how much thought you put into it, put into things. It's all consuming. It's all the time. Yeah. Oh, wow. And uh, you just, uh, for, for me, like, I, I just don't consider that, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, and yeah, you see, um, you know, a kid who's maybe having a, a, an extra special meltdown yeah. at, a, at a Walmart or something. But, you know, if the, if the kid's, like, not in a wheelchair or doesn't have, yeah. you know, ov- obvious visible signs, mm-hmm. then, yeah, you would make those, um, yeah. those uh, I, I guess. Yeah. And, and you know what? I, I never would have thought about that. So thank you for, for yeah. bringing that up no, as well. So are you, are you guys from Peterborough? I'm from Peterborough, yes. Yeah, Jason, too? Jason's from Ottawa. Why, why does Jason always have pictures of really cool concerts? Jason is, uh, he's, he has, uh, he's just very well connected. He's got a lot yeah. of friends. He, he helps to manage, um, I Mother Earth also. Okay. Um, he's been in music his whole life. Um, so with that comes friendships and yeah, he's a music lover and a music addict. So, so that's very, does Aiden have a love for music? He does well? have both kids have a love for music. Yeah. And, th- yeah. and that's another thing we should mention is Emma. Uh, Emma is, Emma. Uh, is Emma's young, or is Aiden's younger sister. Yes. And, yes. um, and as you describe her, probably one of the most patient people you've ever met. It's, you know, uh, without, without shedding a tear, um, you know, every, every parent, you know, watches if they've got multiple kids, watches their kids interact with their siblings and, and they see them. Nobody gets you better than your siblings, right. really, other than your parents. Your siblings are who understand you the most. Um, and uh, it's amazing to see the instinct uh, and the nurturing and the love and the caring and support that happens um, you know, with siblings. And it's interesting to see the role reversals. You know, uh, you know we, we refer to Emma as Aiden's um, little big sister. Right. Um, she, she, she nurtures him. She takes care of him. And we don't, we're very careful to not put responsibility on her. It's not her responsibility. Her responsibility is to be a, a, a nine-year-old little girl who loves dance and music and that's her thing. Have a great time. But she wants to be part of it. And Autism is not a taboo word in our house. No. Um, it's not. So, it's not the elephant in the room. Um, we we talk very openly and honestly. Um, I remember having a conversation with her when she was four, and it's important we check in regularly with her because it is a very high stress situation. Aiden's meltdowns happen daily, and they're brutal. They're they're brutal to be honest. They're very physical. They're very. Uh, it's like a. It's, uh, it can be a war zone, and we have to have safety plans in place for every single one of us, which we do, and we've had to utilize more times than I'd like to say. Um, so we have to check in regularly. How are you doing? Uh, you know, how, it's okay to feel whatever it is you're feeling, to be angry, to be sad, to be happy, to be whatever. It's okay. Right. Um, and uh, I remember at four explaining to her um, in her own way about autism and what that looked like and um, hearing her cry because it didn't occur to her that this might be a lifelong thing. How do you, how do you describe autism to a child? Um, what, what do you use to describe that? Uh, we, you know, 
we really use him because I, I, I don't want to... Everyone is different, and she knows many right. kids with autism. So I don't like to say this is what this is. It's um, not all encompassing, just this. No, and yeah. every person is different. Every every child is different. Um, but uh, you know, I just talk about Aiden and um, you know how far he's come and how what an influence she is on him. He learned to play because of her. You know, by by watching her. By it was years that he wouldn't play, he wouldn't interact, and then yeah. just. Bam, Nine right? years old, he started to play. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Uh, watching Emma and amazing. Again, social media and everything else, but YouTube. He will, he'll put his laptop up on the dining room table and he'll have, uh, he'll look up uh, kids playing with their Super Mario stuffies and they play and they're talking about it on online and then he watches it and then he mimics what they're doing. So he's bouncing around the house doing exactly what they're doing, which is a highly big skill to have. So it's coming. It's coming all the time. Now, you say uh, that there's no all-encompassing way to describe autism. Is mm -hmm. there still a lot of mystery behind it for you? Oh, yeah. Uh, um, yes, for everybody. Uh, for absolutely, 100%. And, um, you know, um, there's mystery uh, behind Aiden. It's just like we could just unlock... This is, if this we is, could just unlock that, you know. Is there is there still? For, first of all, are, are you a fan of John Travolta? <laughs> I don't think. I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's okay. Is well, he here? No, he, oh. he he made he made this comment years ago. Um, he was kind of an autism denier, right? With his oh, son. Oh right, yes. And he oh went this yes. Whole thing. And uh, you know yeah. there is, there are powerful voices in the media mm -hmm. um, who will say things that are just concrete, like nope, this does not exist, this is not yeah. right, and um, it, it just it must be hard for people like you who are trying to raise awareness that yes, this, this is a real thing, people. I I I can't believe um, I have a responsibility um, to each their own, but you know I have a responsibility to my family. I I raise uh, our family in this community, which is why I started tweeting tweeting in the first place um, because I wanted more more than not is to have people in my community when I'm taking Aiden out um, for them to be maybe more aware if it, if you see a child reacting in some way that maybe they might start thinking ah okay maybe there's something else happening here right um, and so the, I was kind of tweeting selfishly to be honest at the beginning and um, and I still do I still because it's healing and it's therapeutic and it's feels good to me and if I can just go blah and get it all out there, then I can get through this meltdown so much better. Well, so, <laughs> well it's good so, for you too because it's like counting to ten. You, you know? Yeah, I don't think a people, a lot of people realize like you, you have to spend a lot of time at home and uh, all the time. Yeah, that's and and so being able to have this this outlet for you in a social manner yep. makes you still feel connected to other people. Oh yeah, and I I don't know if you've noticed I'm I'm a bit of an extrovert. So yeah, um, yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm like. The worst case stay-at-home mom ever. Like I, <laughs> I was meant to work and go out and be with people, and I get energized from people. I just I I, I need people, um, and uh, you know, so it's really hard being at home all the time. And you know, yeah, I need that. I need to unload. So um, I want to I want to actually take you back just for my own yeah. curious mind. Um, yeah. When did you start realizing that Aiden might be a little bit different? Uh, I noticed there were issues when Aiden was a baby. Um, when he was, I remember the first moment that um, I thought, okay, um, I had, my girlfriend came over with her baby, who was the same age as him, and I think they were maybe about six months old, and they're just mm -hmm. sitting on their own. And um, we had both the babies sitting beside each other, and um, she was she was reaching out to him and like, oh, what's that? Like, you have a baby, yeah, right? Yeah. That's, you know, and so... She was reaching out to him like, oh, you're interesting, you know, and he was like, it was like there was nobody in the room. It, okay. He could have, for all he knew, he was alone in the room. Like, he was just, he just, there was nothing. Right. And, and um, I couldn't get him to smile. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get him even to look at me. Right. Um, there was no connection. There was, it was like, there was nothing. And... Um, that's nice. Did you see the beer I delivery did. that just I happened I saw the there? shaky hand coming over. <laughs> um, you know, and then, and then things like babbling. And, you know, and babies, bye-bye, bye-bye. Right. There was none of that. There was no pointing to anything. And I remember talking. This was when we were in Ottawa. Um, I remember saying to our pediatrician, I'm, I'm a little concerned. Well, I'm very concerned. He's not doing this. He's not doing that. And da-da-da-da. Um, 
and this is such a typical story, Mike, of any parent that I've talked to, um, so many have experienced the same thing. The pediatrician said to me, relax, Ugh. relax. Yeah. First time mom, put the books down. <laughs> and I was so offended. Of course, I knew. I was like, there is something wrong. There's something happening here. There's something going on that's not just quite right. Right. And um, I'm, I'm in ECE, early childhood education. Okay. Is what, my, is what I went to school for. It was what I was working at at the time. Um, and I worked with kids uh, who were autistic, actually, which was ironic. I was actually paired with a little boy who was uh, on the spectrum, and he was like my person. And... Um, and uh, so it's sort of like, it was almost like all the training and everything else, things just sort of fit in this way that kind of got us to this point that's like, ah, it's always different having your own child, but like that really helped actually. And now, you know, I just a little bit more prepared maybe, I don't know. Okay. Um, but uh, people weren't listening. They weren't listening. It was a waiting game. And it was, uh, wait, just wait, just relax. Give it just three more months. And boys are always slower to develop than girls, right. which every man should be offended by that comment, by the way. Um, <laughs> yeah, I totally, It might be true, but I'm not, you know. I didn't hit puberty till 23, yeah. just so you know. And you're 24. But anyways. <laughs> <laughs> the beard came in last week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, so it wasn't ta- it, we weren't taken seriously. It was very much like stop, 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 and first time mom, and just would relax. Oh, he wasn't babbling, wasn't talking. No mama, no dada, no nothing. And you know, oh, your husband's really shy. He's quiet. So, right. and you know, it wasn't until uh, he got older, and and then and then at the point where they realize, oh, maybe she's right. Maybe there is something happening. And then it's like, okay, well, we'll put him on a waiting list for this. Uh, so, yeah, and then wait. you wait a year. We had to wait a year for speech therapy. We waited a full year. He was now three. We get to the appointment, and the uh, occupational therapist, or the speech pathologist at CHIO, spent five minutes with him, and she said, oh, I'm sorry. I can't help him. There's something going on here that's beyond me. We'd waited 12 months for that appointment, and I just fell to pieces. Wow. Just to pieces. Like, well, now what? Well, now we put him on a waiting list to see, you know, the developmental pediatrician, which was eight months. You know, it was like you, every child who is on the spectrum or has any kind of developmental disability or anything else, it's like they spend the first 10 years on waiting lists, which then means parents have to, if they want to provide their child with as much help as, and therapy as they can, they have to pay out of pocket. Right, of course. Because it's not covered. So we sold our home. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we were living here, we sold our home. Uh, we moved in with my mom and dad um, and lived, thankfully, in their basement. Yeah. Um, and with our dog and our daughter and all four of us. And that's how we were paying for therapy. We hired some guy to come down from Toronto to work with him every month. Um, did, did it help? Well, it made me feel better, like we were doing something. Right. You know, um, okay. that we weren't just sitting and waiting. And, you know, I think it probably did help. It probably did help. If anything, uh, you know, it got him to be with someone else and to see the structure of something happening. But, you know, it's a shameful. That shouldn't have to happen. No, and um, there, there should be, I guess, an, uh, I guess what you were looking for was a much earlier diagnosis. Yes. Yeah, and it took far too long. Did, too many excuses. Do you know if it still takes that long nowadays? Um, I think it's a case-by-case case thing, perhaps. Um, the, the, the issue with Aiden, what it was, was... There's several things happening that it wasn't it wasn't black and white. So it wasn't yeah. like, um, oh, without a doubt he's autistic. There was other factors that kind of maybe graded a little bit. So it depended. Uh, you know, I think the combination of the developmental pediatricians we saw, I think, if you were to com- put co- compile their ages together, they would have been 365 years old. So <laughs> I think there's that old school mentality right. of of <laughs> an autistic person should look like Rain Man. Oh. Yeah, I'm not kidding. And that you see that all the time. People will ask me, um, so your son, eh? He must love numbers. He must be good with numbers. It's like, okay. Or what's his thing? Here, here's our diagnosis. Uh, he's going to come to Blue Heron with us for like, like yeah. and, 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 that, and that's sort of the thing that yeah. you, and, and still there's stigma that you would oh, face. Oh, there's such stigma. There still is stigma. And I can't, I, I can't believe I, I once, uh, this is an awful story, but um, I was, uh, I was, when I was still working, I can't believe I worked as long as I did, but when I was working, I was working 20 hours a week, so 11 to 3 or something. And after school, my dad picked Aiden up and had him for maybe 45 minutes until I got home. So okay. 45 minutes, and like, 
I'd say to him, just drive him around with them because it's calming. Just drive around if you want. I mean, you, that'll you help. You guys have like a like a trail that you do, like oh, a caravan I, trail. Totally. Right? I have a route. I know where every one of you live. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 no, um, and what you drive, but um, <laughs> and you got to fix that windshield, by the way. <laughs> hey, all right, that's it. <laughs> My wife has to fix that windshield. Oh no, no, no. Okay. Um, but uh, but yeah, we do. I I like to drive just outside the the city uh, the city limits because there's no stopping or starting and. If there's cars coming behind us, he gets panicked. Like, oh my God, what are they doing? What are they? They're following us. And oh. so, if you're in the country, then you don't have to worry about that. So. And then, then and these are the the little things that you've picked up o- over. How, how old is he now? Twelve. He's twelve. He's, he's turned 12. twelve. Yeah. So he's twelve now, and these are the, the, the little tricks that you've picked up along the way. And I'm sure you have to keep picking up more and more yeah. and keep evolving with yes. him, right? Yeah, all the time. And and speaking of that evolvement, as he's a twelve year old boy, one day he's going to be an eighteen year old boy. Yeah. And um, that's a scary thought. Like you're. You're you're a petite woman, but you must have like some strong pipes going on. Uh, here, right? It's it's amazing, uh, Mike, because he out, he basically has out. Uh, I wouldn't say sized me, but uh, certainly outstrength me by the time he was probably. Uh, I'd have to even say seven. Yeah. Uh, because wow. you put that adrenaline, you put that anger, you put that rage into it. One summer, we went through five TVs. You know the big. 27 yeah. inch with the big bottom ends. They're heavy. I can't lift one. Uh, we went through five of them. He'd be able to pick them up and throw them across the room. Wow. That is how strong he is so you, during a meltdown. You'd have to learn techniques to be able to subdue Yeah, I, I have uh, training actually for pro- proper restraint and CVI training is what it's called for, okay. uh, for uh, you know, uh, we all do. But um, at the same time, it's sort of like when you're in it, you know, you're just you're just in it. And uh, we went actually last night. We had uh, it's been a really tough weekend in our house this weekend. Okay. Um, you know, and uh, it's gotten to a point where um, you know I try to limit my time alone with him as much as I can. Uh, I certainly, unless I know it's 100% guarantee, I don't try to take him out in public with just myself because I can't I can't uh, I can't handle him if it turns and it can turn so quickly. A child crying, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, just, you know, in Walmart, you know how people stand in the middle aisle and they're just kind of just, stand, yeah. <laughs> they're just like this, just standing there for nothing. Um, if they happen to brush him or bump him, or then it's, it's, you're it's done. game over, game right? Game over. And this, uh, th- this must be a problem for you with friends and family who are like, oh no, you know, people who don't understand, they're like, yeah. oh no, come over to our house. Oh yeah, bring it's okay. Aiden, it'll it's be great. It's okay, and People's intentions are so pure for the, you know, and so genuine. And and I know, I know they don't mind if if um, if something happens and uh, it doesn't. He, you know, something. You know, I know people are genuine. They mean it. I don't we don't mind. Whatever happens, it's fine. But we kind of mind. Yeah. You know, and and Aiden's also, you know, he may have autism, but he's certainly well aware of the differences, um, you right. know, and he's very self-conscious of the differences he has and, and his meltdowns. And he feels terrible when he, after he has a meltdown, he'll say, I sorry, I sorry, I sorry. And then it, he kind of tail spins back into a meltdown, but, um, he doesn't want, he doesn't want a crowd no. watching him, you it, know, and even if it's the most understanding, most compassionate crowd, he doesn't want people watching him melting down and throwing your TV and, and tossing your lamps off to the sea. He doesn't want people watching that. And I don't really want people watching that either. We have, um, out of out of every, we've got a great support system. We yeah. have an awesome support system. Well, I system. see it online all the time. Yeah. And all these beautiful people here. Yeah. Um, and, uh, um, and my family, of course, and our friends, they're all amazing. And, it, you know, and now they've gotten to a point where it's sort of like, you tell me what we can do. Right. You know, you let us know what we can do, and um, yeah, so. And there's um, also, um, I mean, you have had some some minor breakthroughs. I'm sure there's there, there yeah. are breakthroughs that happen all the time, but yeah. the the one great one I remember was um, on our show on Checks TV and Checks Daily. Um, we were sharing this initiative, this Kickstarter that yeah. you guys had, yeah. and uh, I think it was through one of the guys that I mother yeah. Earth, uh, that yeah. was setting it up. Yeah. So that's uh, Jason's connections working yeah. again. That helped to send Aiden on this amazing trip to California yeah. to a surf camp. Yes. What was yes. that like? So awesome. Because I asked a question on Twitter a little while ago. If you could go anywhere right now, and where I, would you go? It was California, California. <laughs> surf camp. I want to repeat that. Yes. So yes. So what happened to him when he when he got to go out and try surfing for the first time? Well, 
He had, uh, yeah, amazing, because there's nobody better in this world to surf with than the legend that is Izzy Paskowitz. Mm -hmm. He is a pro surfer. He is the coolest guy in the world, aside from Neil Morton and Mike Judson. Um, <laughs> Two guys. He, <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, and uh, no, he is, he's amazing. And he has a son who's autistic, who's 24, I okay. think. So certainly there's nobody better. And they run autism surf camps too. Um, the amazing thing about this camp was we could all surf. So Aiden got out in the water. Emma got to surf, a little surfer girl. She got up the first time and she was like, you know, <laughs> this the first time. Um, and um, uh, I never did get up, but... Uh, you didn't get up? Not really. You no. didn't get to For shred like any gnar? 30 seconds. 30 seconds? It's harder than it looks. Uh, that's, it's sad when you only get up for 30 seconds. <laughs> you know, you know all about it, but you... <laughs> Well, I mean, you're surfing, right? You yeah, surf surfing. too. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm surfing in Little Lake. Well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, no, it's hard, but uh, and you know, and so the whole community, and it was all uh, all families, autis autism families. So you don't experience anything like this than being lined up on the beach. Everybody, every walk of life, all there for the same reason, and standing there, it, it's emotional. Uh, standing there, cheering on other people's kids who have struggles and challenges and you know, you know, have a general idea anyway of how hard it is that they even just got here. Yeah. And they're on the water and these kids are surfing whether they need help, whether they're on their own. You're all clapping and cheering them on. There's such a camaraderie that I can't, there's no words to explain that the, the uh, amazement that that was. And there is a magic to it. There is a magic to it. Aiden was calm, um, happy, yeah. Um, and it, it, was it was amazing and there was a bonding I'm bonded with these families forever um, and we can't wait for the time that we can get back there uh, now I'm not sure I'm excited about putting Aiden on a plane for five hours again anytime what soon what was that like? that was uh, something I'd want to wait to do for a few more years. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it was a learning experience it off was, the first one? It was a learning experience. I learned that there's a lot of jerkish people in the world. Yeah, but yeah. Were you able to, to, yeah. to go into the airplane bathroom to muffle sounds? Or? No. no. Actually, the airplane bathroom was broken uh, on our way down. Great. There was a crying baby behind us. Yeah. Uh, in front of us, there was a couple uh, who were arguing, and she was like, your hands are dry. Put on some lotion. And he's like, my hands are fine. No, they look, look at them. They're awful. They're chapped. And they're fine, but they're fine. No, they look sore. Put on some cream. And they're like, I'm like, and I kept looking. I'm like, is this, gosh, did good you're going to come out? Like, is this, a, is this for real? This is a real, <laughs> yeah, my, my wife and I argue a oh lot about God. directions and hand cream. Yeah, well, and there you go. And it's led to many broken windshields. Yeah, in yeah, time. well, you know, but it was bizarre. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, the actual, the, the stewardesses and the, the flight attendants, and uh, they were all amazing on the plane. You just can't control how many babies are going to be on a plane at once. You know and I, all of the babies in the entire uh, North America was they were on that plane. So, right. so it was it was the the plane from yeah, heaven. and and getting off the plane on the way home at the end of any vacation, you just want to be home. Like you're just you're done, and uh, you know you just want to be at home. And yeah, you know, everybody gets up um, after the flight. And you're just all waiting, like you're just waiting to get out. And uh, there was a mortgage broker standing in front of us, uh, handing out her card oh, yeah. to everybody in front of us. And I actually, I did finally say, uh, we need off this plane, like right now, like right now. And as soon as we got off, he just lost it. He just, he held it in for so long that he just, he had to let it go. Have, have you lost your patience for people in public? Many times. Yeah. And I'm, I, I have to say, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to be shy about it. No. I could be a jerk. Um, but, but really, uh, you know, your parenting instincts come out. You just want to protect your kids. And you get so offended by people who are so quick to be rude and to be hurtful and to be judgmental. And now that's not the norm. There's more good people than there are bad people, obviously. I think so. I think so, for sure. For sure. We've encountered way too many awesome people. Um, but... You know, there are those people, and they do. They just, and they always catch you at your weakest moment, always. Do you have stock lines for them? <laughs> do, do you have stock? You, you have to keep stocks I, in your head, right? I, 
I know everybody's facial expressions all the time, anywhere right. I am. I'm reading everybody in this room right now. <laughs> no, oh, no. But yes. No, but no, you do. You, you, you can read every single facial expression. Uh, yeah. and, right, right, Steph? Yeah, she knows. Um, you just, you have a knack for it. You, you just do. And, uh, and sometime, and now, now I think I'm a much, much happier, better person. I handle it a lot better. I take most of it with a grain of salt, but there is still sometimes where I just can't help it. And I feel like this is a, this is a teaching moment. Yeah. And I, I look at it now that way, as opposed to that, like, how dare you? You know, I, I more or less say, I'm not sure if you're aware or not, but my son actually is autistic. Mm -hmm. So just to let you know what you're witnessing right now is an autism meltdown. So you can go home and you can Google it. Yeah. And because most people need to. And that's what I've said. I have said that more times. Hey, go home. I'm look just it having up. it on my favorites on my phone. I just hold yeah, on a second. Yeah, Paul, yeah, hold on. You read there. this and shut up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I've done. Go home. Google autism meltdown, and this is exactly what you've seen. I've had somebody fight me on it. Yeah, yeah, that it, is not what I'm. What I witnessed was absolutely horrifying. Oh, they're that's like, oh, that's child abuse or something yeah, like that. Oh yeah, right? yeah. No, that was that. That's a meltdown, and that happens in yeah. our house eight thousand times. I'd be a day. like, you know, you walk away, or you're going to see regular abuse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And me and you. <laughs> yeah, and you later. Uh, yeah, me on and the you. playground. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the one uh, we're, we're almost out of time here, and I feel like I could keep going for another hour or so with you. Um, the, the one thing I wanted to uh, for, for you to be able to address to the people who are going to be watching this later is, um, okay, uh, I'll give you I'll give you an instance or a, a, a hypothetical here. Yeah. So um, you're a mom, you're a dad, and you know what you you, you have a, a five or six month old child, and it's that child is experiencing what you just described mm -hmm. earlier in the podcast. Yeah. They're not smiling. They're not. Where do they go? What's their starting point? Well, first of all, follow your instincts. Parents know. They know. They know far better than most, most experts will ever tell you. And if that pediatrician, if it starts with them always. Mm -hmm. um, if your pediatrician is, uh, you know, questioning you or, or putting their ego into it, like, no, no, it's fine, it's fine, and you feel very strongly... Uh, you request to see somebody else. You ask for a referral. You, you know, get into five counties however way you need to. That's where you start is, is through five counties. And they will, they will uh, you'll be probably put on a waiting list. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and keep looking. If that doesn't help, then you go to a, um, a child psychologist. You go to a psychiatrist. You, you do whatever you can uh, to either shorten those waiting, you know, the waiting line, uh, waiting whatever, um, and you get it done. You just well, never give up. What about while you're waiting? While you're waiting. When it's just you and your, and your child. When it's, well, then you, you touch your fingertips. You've got, you've got so much information now, more than I did. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you've got everything. There, the thing is, the beauty with social media is um, you might feel like you're alone, but there is 10 million other people who are living almost an identical existence to what you are. Um, you know, whether or not, you know, and that's, they're your sounding board. Reach out to them. There's a million of them on Twitter. There's fantastic pages on Facebook. Um, you know, find the right one that suits you. And in the meantime, while you're waiting for those services, tap into those for support. Because that's, that's what matters most, really, is the support from whatever community you can grab. You know what? I don't really like having competition of any sorts in my life, but I, I think that you should probably have a podcast. <laughs> so you spend so much time at home. Oh, <laughs> thank you. But this is this is my point here: is um, you spend so much time at home, and um, you know you can't leave, and you've got Aiden at home as yeah. well. Stick a camera on yourself, grab a microphone, and, and just dance. turn it on. Oh, just turn it on and dance, <laughs> and just have a time. Turn it on for two, three hours a day. Record it and put it on. Put it online. Take you two seconds to do it, and uh, people who are going through the similar things that you are going to, or if they're in the beginner stage or the later stage, they can be directed to it and go on and be like, "Okay, the, she's dealing with it this way. This is helping her. This could help me, and it could be therapeutic for everyone." We that's talk a, about it after. That, yeah, that's a thought, Mike. Thanks. That's a thought. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much thank for you. being on the Thanks podcast. Thanks for having me. Thank you. No, Thanks. you're like Thanks you're gonna have to come back because you're totally will come back anytime. So much fun. Maybe All right, I'll get a beer next time too. You know what? I'm really disappointed <laughs> in uh, where's David Kosky no, guest no. services. He's supposed to have beer for the for the guests. I requested white water with lemon. White water but, with lemon. No, I'm kidding. You're off the show. All right. Thank you so much for joining. Thanks so much, Kate guys. Wells. Thank you. Thanks very much. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. All right.
B2BO Canada Live is brought to you by Mars Music. Mars Music is always sponsoring the musical portion of our show because we always have live music. We're going to have a great guest today, and that is Missy Not. But the great thing about Mars Music is that there's still just a little local place right there on George Street attached to Market Hall. When you go in there, uh, they've got everything you need, but at the same time, if you need anything, they can order it in very, very quick. Everyone there is crazy knowledgeable. In fact, they're, they're so smart that I just kind of go in there and let them tell me what I need. And they're the ones who set up all the sound equipment for our podcast, and that's why it sounds so good. And so we always have to thank everyone at Mars Music, especially Marcus. Thank you so much for all of your help. Let's continue with the podcast. All right, welcome back to BTBO Canada Live. Joining me now, Missy Not. Who do we have with us right now? This is my friend Cody Carslake. Hi, Cody. How are you? Good, good. Uh, Good. Thanks for having me. Oh man! <laughs> All right. So, so Cody's been playing with you for the last little while. Uh, we we've, we've been jamming on and off. Um, he jams with Tammy J. Wild, who has been my country kind of in around the community, and he's her guitar player when they when they want to be. So yeah, we've we've been jamming for a few years, friends for a lot of years. So. All right. Well. Um, We've got the, the song that you're going to play. You just put out an amazing video with Kate LaDuce from Robot Eyes, who was here earlier. And um, that link, if you go to the info part of your YouTube thing, is going to be there. And you can just click the link. If you're on SoundCloud, then you can find the link in there as well. And give it a watch. And then give it a comment. And give it a like, a thumbs up, whatever it is, because it's absolutely gorgeous video. Um, I want to hear you guys play live yeah, sure. to play out the rest of our, sh uh, our show. So. Whenever you are ready, we are going to have Missy Knot playing, and the name of the song is? Uh, we're going to do One Last Touch. One Last Touch. Uh, is, there any, is there anything behind this song you want to talk about? Not that I want to talk about. <laughs> you can use your imagination. Just one name. That's all we want. <laughs> I, I honestly don't know anything about this song. I'm not, I won't put you in that position, but... <laughs> I'll, I'll have an answer for you some other time. All right, and uh, this is it. Missy Not playing out PTBO Canada Live. Let's do this.
Thank you so much. Thank you, Cody. All right, Missy Not, that's it. BTBO Canada Live, episode six in the books. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks again for having us. All right, we're out. And uh, you're supporting Pink of the Rink. What is Pink of the Rink? Pink of the Rink is a Pete's game in honor of breast cancer. It's coming up fe February 7th for uh, playing the Spin Windsor Spitfires. You're going to be involved uh, during yep. after. Um, we have uh, Dan involved as, as the charity um, chair person. Um, and it's, it's a great event where we're going to raise money for breast cancer and there's lots of things happening and it's going to be a great event. We got a lot of great people involved with it, including yourself. So, okay, great. And that's February 7th and it's a Saturday it's and a Saturday. I'm allowed to do an auction. And then I think we're going to go have some fun after, right? Uh, you, you, uh, as long as you're okay, you can have some fun before and after, but, uh, uh well, we won't tell the sponsors <laughs> or anything about that, but, uh, you know, what? that's going to be our Koski nugget today because I know this is a very important event that you've been helping to put on and that you feel very passionate about pink in the ring. Yeah. Daniel Tool's going to be there. I'm going to be there. We're going to have a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. That is our nugget for today, unless you have something weird you want to say. Well, no. I sound wicked there, bud. Good no. work. All right.